Hey, I want to talk to you about parallels today. Wonderful parallels. It's so, it's so nice to discover or to see that uh, your desires come true in, uh, in the real world, as they say, right? Um, and um, I had a chance this weekend to see that in action um, through no credit of my own. Uh, it simply was this wonderful thing we can also call serendipity. Um, for those of you in the States, you'll probably get a better grip of what I'm going to talk about in this video. If I mention the name of Mike Rowe, he uh, from the TV show Dirty Jobs. Now, you know Mike Rowe because of the TV show, of course, but then you may also know that he talks about um, trade programs and vocational schools a lot, and that he started his own foundation called uh, the Mike Rowe Works, which gives scholarships to young people interested in taking on those jobs, learning how to do them because there's a huge gap in the United States and in other countries like Romania, for example, um, between uh, the actual marketplace need and the jobs that are out there and the jobs that people are going to school for. A lot of people are going to college and they're doing master's programs and doctorates for jobs that just aren't there or jobs that pay diddly squat um, especially in Romania, when they could simply go uh, through vocational programs, uh, go to technical schools and get trained for jobs that they probably will like and if they don't like them they can always get out of the schools and it won't cost them a fortune like it does to go to college or, or to, uh, to higher education. Um, and they can learn those jobs if they like them for a fraction of the amount of costs to uh, learn, well, that's that's the funny part, isn't it? You go to college and you go to get a master's or a doctorate, and you don't really learn to do a job, do you? You get out there in the real world and you find out that you're not really trained for it, and you have to relearn certain things, or you have to learn new things in order to be useful to your employer or to the job that uh, you want to do. Well, these technical schools actually teach you how to do the jobs that are out there right now, and they pay good money. So anyway, that's the parallel in the United States. That's what Mike Rowe is doing. Here's the funny and wonderful part for me. In 2012, I made a video called The Need for Craftsmen, where I talked about uh, this disconnect uh, between what we need as people uh, in order to uh, keep things going in these countries that we live in and uh, what the people out there uh, um, are going to school for. And I was trying to encourage people to um, to, uh, to go to trade schools to learn to learn these jobs that we actually need carpentry, masonry, uh, electricians, plumbers, Learn to do them well, uh, so that we can uh, we can employ them. At the time, I was renovating uh, our house, and I'm still renovating our house. Actually, <laughs> we're still not done. <laughs> this thing is a money pit, um, but uh, it's a wonderful money pit, and we love it. So I guess that's okay. Uh, but at the time, I was renovating our house, and I just couldn't find qualified uh, workmen, craftsmen as I call them, because it's a craft, really, isn't it? If you know to do it well, what you're doing is you're a craftsman, you're not just a workman. You're creating something that's going to stick around for quite some time, and it's going to be enjoyed by people in a tactile sort of way. It's not an abstract sort of way, like uh, words on a page, or some equation somewhere, um, or some research uh, that comes up with a bunch of numbers and percentages. This is real stuff, real stuff that we get to live in, and touch, and uh, you know, and feel like like this couch that I'm sitting on right now with these wonderful carvings here. You see, 
on the edge and, and this uh, corduroy this is real corduroy by the way <laughs> it's not the fake stuff that gets made these days because real corduroy is pretty expensive to make and it's pretty hard to make and these days if you buy corduroy pants unless you buy them from a very reputable company it, chances are it's not going to be real corduroy but that's a story for another <laughs> video <laughs> So in 2012, I made this video called The Need for Craftsman, and I'll, I'll put a link to it in, in, at the bottom of the screen for you to watch it if you want to. Now here's the wonderful part. This weekend, uh, <clears throat> my wife was invited to participate at, a, um, at an event that took place at Braun Castle. Braunkessel, uh, as you may know or may not know, is uh, considered one of the homes of Dracula, and so you get a lot of uh, a lot of tourists to go go to see it. Um, but anyway, uh, so the, the the event took place at, at Braunkessel, and it was the culmination of a week long sort of camp, but a learning camp for uh, underprivileged children. Uh, who've just gotten into vocational and training schools, professional schools. And it was a camp to teach them about life, real life, and to teach them how to be better people, what to look forward to in life. You know, values, real, real values that create real people that you want to connect with. Just really wonderful stuff that we had no idea was happening in the country. And um, so, the, the reason my wife doesn't got got invited was, of course, she's a well-known author in Romania, and uh, she also has her web shows, and she uh, she's appeared in the media countless times. So she's well known for that, right? She's written what nine books? Uh, I think a tenth is on the way. So uh, and she's a chef, right? So that's why she got invited to the camp, to the culmination of that week week long camp, for cooks and waiters. Um, for chefs and waiters, I should say. So in this in this camp, they not only taught them these wonderful values that I mentioned just a bit before, but they taught them how to how to be waiters. I mean, they really crammed it in there. You can imagine, in just a week, you'd be amazed at the results they got, because this culmination that I talk about was this dinner that they worked on for three days. Um, and they were drilled about everything, um, you know, the waiters and the chefs. The chefs, these kids that just got into vocational schools to be cooks and to be chefs, they made this amazing food under the guidance of, 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 of this master chef that, that held the course for them. They learned to really wait on people, and they were so polished by the end of this week, we couldn't believe it. They were. I think better than 70 to 80 percent of the waiters that we've seen out there in Romania. So it was truly an experience, a wonderful experience to, to go visit and see these kids learning and then uh, go visit, get a private tour of the castle and uh, then partake in this wonderful dinner that was prepared by these children. I mean, it, it looked truly professional. Excuse me, even the way it was set on the plates, on the dinnerware, and everything was just wonderful. The taste, uh, the textures, the colors, the food, it was wonderful. Even my wife was blown away, and she's a chef, and this is, you know, this is what she does. She creates dishes. So, um, that was the, the third and very wonderful parallel uh, to, to, to these efforts, or... Uh, I shouldn't call what I'm doing when I'm just calling for craftsman and effort, but it's a wonderful parallel between what Mike Rowe is doing in the United States with his foundation and what they're doing here in Romania. The name of the project is Tsara Lui Andrei, so it's it's uh, Andrew's country, I guess would be in English uh, the story or the name for it, and it's um, it's a project, and this is. This is where it gets very interesting for me. It's a project that's sponsored um, entirely by OMV Petrom, which is uh, the national petroleum company here in Romania. If you don't know, Romania has a long history of oil exploration. I think it was the second country in the world, uh, 
that started to explore uh, for, uh, for oil and uh, discovered oil and started to process it and actually into a, into a fuel, diesel and gasoline for cars. And uh, during World War II, of course, the, the oil fields of Romania were a uh, constant target of bombardment uh, uh, by its uh, enemies and allies. It was a weird combination because they were trying to keep oil f away from the hands of the invaders and the invaders were trying to keep oil away from the hands of the allies so they were just bombing the crap out of our oil fields here. <laughs> so anyway, um, Romania's national oil company, uh, which I believe was bought in part entirely by OMV, which is the Österreich Motor Vehicle something or other company. It's the Austrian oil company. Anyway, Romanian oil, uh, national oil company is the one who's sponsoring this wonderful, uh, this wonderful event. Uh, well, series of events because they've been taking place for years in Romania. And um, this was the first time we, we were invited and we got to participate and it was just really wonderful. We were so thankful that this is going on and that uh, our children, the children of this country, especially the underprivileged ones, are being taught how to be better people and are being shown that there's a better way to live their lives and are being offered employment opportunities and, and trained for actual jobs that exist out there. So it's... Um, it was it was a very nice experience and we're thankful that we went and we're thankful that this is happening in our country yeah so um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and what I'll do is I'll leave you with a video that I shot af at the after party uh, this was after the dinner all the children uh, they got to have their own party with a campfire uh, and so they, they uh, listened to music and they danced uh, and they sang by this roaring fire so that's what I'll leave you with those images thanks for watching bye